but all uh, 15 of us are doing well. Okay, the recording has started, so let's jump straight in. So morning stand-up, it is 30th of May, day one, week four today. A um, couple of announcements. So you've all seen that uh, the week four challenge has dropped. It's in groups. It's a two week long challenge. Should be exciting, should go, um, should have lots of interesting content. So exciting to see how that goes. We'll have two careers challenges this week. They haven't been added yet. Um, we're going to be looking at how to be a T-shaped learner. And we're also going to be doing a time management and a prioritization exercise. So looking forward to uh, that happening. Um, leaderboard has been released. Um, you can log in and check out the leaderboard as part of the 10X system. Uh, or you can log in through your access and you can see the leaderboard uh, and the feedback on your performance uh, up to the end of week two. And so as usual, this it takes about a week for the grading and all the feedback to come back. Um, there was a careers assignment from week one that was a bit delayed in providing feedback. That was my my bad, apologies for that. Um, we have this week, we will also, by at the end of the week, as we've communicated uh, as part of the application process um, and during the week zero process, so at the end of week four, we'll be asking everyone to sign a contract and moving towards uh, getting first deposits in. So this one is a, this is the end of week four. Um, and. Yeah, we want to move into formalizing how everyone is, uh, how everyone's managing, how everyone's doing, and making sure that everything can run, um, that we're kind of together in this process in a more formal way. If anyone has any questions, wants to discuss anything, has any concerns, then do feel free to reach out to Everest, um, and he'll escalate onwards if needed. But in his role as cohort manager, that's his, um, he would be the first point of contact for any comments, questions, concerns, or ideas. But for everyone who's made it this far, we do hope that you plan to stay. Congratulations to uh, Kevin, to Didier, and to Faith on their graduation. Um, yeah, as far as I understand, it was graduation season last week, and they have completed. So congratulations to them. Do I see them? Kevin is online. Is Faith here? Don't see him. Didier, don't see him. But yeah, I hope you had a good celebration, Kevin, and yeah, maybe at, at least a nice dinner and some dancing with friends and family. But we're happy that you're back and you're here on Monday morning. Um, to the rest of the team, any announcements? <clears throat> Faith has just joined. Congratulations, Faith, on your graduation. Um, rest of the team, Mary, uh, Desmond, Everest is at a meeting right now, so he's not available. Okay, so um, let's jump straight in. I'd like to hear reflections, how everyone is doing, how the training, the first three weeks of training have been so far, and what we're looking forward to. And if anyone wants to share what they, uh, how they rested on Sunday, that would also be welcome. So just this usual two questions, how's it been so far and what are we looking forward to this week? And if anyone would like to share how they uh, rested on Sunday, that would also be welcome. So Martin, go ahead. Martin? I, I hope you can be able to hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Uh, yeah, so it's been a, it's been a great uh, three weeks. Uh, there are many things that we've learned. Uh, we've learned about A/B testing. We've learned about deep learning, LST, LSTM, long short-term memory. Uh, we've also been learning about uh, how to do a simple sentiment analysis and topic modeling. And there are many things that uh, I can say I've gained from the program personally and also non-technically. I've also gained a lot of things and I really appreciate because I think uh, if it's already three weeks and uh, there's so much that uh, we have been able to learn, uh, I'm wondering how it will be after 12 weeks, if this, this is just only three weeks. Uh, for the time that uh, I got to rest, uh, that was uh, during the week, the week, the weekend. I got to just go about a normal, just a normal weekend, going to church, 
uh, meeting up with friends, making new friends actually, uh, being with family, uh, doing some bit of farming. Yeah, and uh, basically that was how I spent my weekend. And I'm looking forward to this week's task. I say it was a group task and uh, I'm looking forward to it, yeah, thank you. Did you say you were doing some farming, Martin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you grow? Uh, I grow beans, cabbage, uh, beans, spinach, uh, skumawiki. Uh, I also grow some certain vegetables which I don't know whether you can be able to know them uh, because it's called a uh, kenyaj. Yeah, so there's managu. <laughs> yeah, can so with, can you eat it with ugali? Yeah, yeah we, eat it, we eat it with ugali, of course. <laughs> Okay. All right. Sounds sounds it sounds very positive. Um, so let's go on to who wants to go next. So let's alternate uh, male and female. So we had Martin went first. So who would like to go next? One of the one of the ladies, please. Daisy. Uh, great. Uh, thank you. You heard Ugali, um, and you know you knew you had to speak next. <laughs> yeah, I had Martin say Kenyeji and I'm like, none of you is understanding what he's saying, but I get him. And also Kenyeji has lost meaning here in the country, so it was pretty hilarious. Um, but good stuff, Martin. Um, so also for me, just like my Martin, the first um three weeks have been very have been full of intensive um learning. Uh I, I was just sharing with my friends from school and we were arguing that it's more like you finish uni and you have to throw away everything you've learned in class and start um, afresh because for me it's been so refreshing to see how much statistics sits on machine learning engineering. It's like everything is statistics and machine learning, uh, statistics and linear algebra, only that now you have to see it as code. So that's been very interesting um, for me. Um, and also just getting to learn more about ML ops, the likes of BBC, CML, um, really getting to use tools I never really used in a computer science class, um, which is counterintuitive. So like, I, I, I have really enjoyed my first three weeks and would be sure to like keep going. Um, and also just for the team, I really commend the, the sense of structure, um, and their willingness to help from their tutors, um, because I think it's, it's okay. Yeah, like I, I commend the sense of structure around organizing to make sure that everything works smoothly and the fact that maybe we need assistance from a tutor, you can always get it if it's within um, the time frame. Um, for my weekend, I, I rested a bit. I spent some time into Sunday trying to finish up on the task, the code bit. Um, but for the rest of the day, I just uh, cleaned the house, slept, and a few of my friends came over to cook and uh, just eat and have a good time. I'm excited for this week's task, uh, given that it's a group task. Um, I, I really enjoy group tasks because you find that maybe if it's in a team, it's easy for you to lean into your strength. Mm -hmm. um and for other team members as well to do the same and it's like it's really good if all of you can find that middle point of synergy and just um work through it so i'm excited for it and uh, i so will be doing it it sound something to do with data to do with sound i didn't really look into it much so i'm excited because it's going to be a little different from what we've been doing um before so i look forward to that Thank you, Arjun. Great. Okay, thanks, Binya. We'll go next, and then Stella. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well, Binya. Good morning. Okay, good morning, guys. Uh, to give you an update on my last week's progress, uh, uh, I'm actually quite uh, satisfied with the progress I made last week. Uh, I've managed to understanding the complete uh, a lot of the tasks uh, for that i'm grateful uh, in the regarding blockers i haven't uh, made uh, encountered any hard blockers so there wasn't any issue 
in that regard. Uh, I look forward to working with the team again. <clears throat> Last time uh, we did great, but it was uh, around the end, so we didn't do much with our team effort. So this time around, we intend to improve upon that and do a better job in uh, teamwork. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Benio. Stella? Good morning. I hope that you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you all. Good morning. Okay, so uh, my week three was good. Um, tried to learn new stuff, uh, but um, not really satisfied with the progress, but looking forward to learning more. Um, the, the weekend I spent mostly planning the week and trying to uh, get a good structure for for my progress going forward. I also spent time with my family and had uh, some of time from the screen and went out uh, for an event with my family and it was really nice. Yeah, looking forward to diving into the project on speech recognition and working in a group. Yeah, and all the best to my fellow trainees. Okay, great. Um, so Michael has just provided an update in writing. Um, so we'll take that as our contribution from the men and we'll go to uh, Margaret. Um, good morning, everyone. Good so, morning, Margaret. Um, my weekend was okay. Um, I had a very busy weekend though. Um, so um, I wasn't really satisfied with what I delivered on Friday, but I plan to still keep working on it and add more time this week. Yeah. Do you, want, you mean you want to keep working on your week three challenge during the week or do you want to work on it afterwards? Um, both of them hand in hand at the same time. Okay. Yeah. My advice to you would be to do one thing at a time. I think week four will be pretty busy. Um, this is part of the reason why we have this structured job search uh, phase where there will be time to redo some of the challenges that you're not satisfied with. Okay. Yeah, I would be careful not to, I mean, each week is quite busy. I don't know how realistic it is to be able to do uh, last week plus this week together. Okay. Um, could you please explain more about the, the structured approach? Um, when do we have time to, yeah, when do we have time to re refine our work? So the way we've structured the program is three months of training, which ends on, I think it's the 27th or the 29th of July. I have to check. It's the Friday, whatever it is. And for three months after that, we will be available and be doing uh, regular stand-ups. And the goal there is to help people match into jobs. And so the focus will switch from training into redoing the aspects of the training that uh, weren't complete. And this is why we have this competency mapping that you can see in the 10X system so that you recognize which areas do you need to improve on A and B, you can decide which of the challenges are most relevant for the career that you want to pursue and you can start focusing on those. And so during that three months uh, supported or supported job search phase, that is a better time for you to redo the challenges that you didn't feel um, great about as opposed okay. to during the training. Makes sense, thanks. And our goal is one of the things that we've learned is people most of the trainees, they look forward to having other people around. So they're not just going from this sort of rhythm to sitting alone by themselves. And so this is a uh, more slow transition from this intensity to a more normal intensity, uh, which you'll find in the world of work. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. You did, yeah? Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so to give an update on last week, last week was good. Uh, I can say I have implemented everything that I wanted to, but it still was good. The learning curve was uh, good as well. Uh, on my weekend, I still can't say that I've rested well. I've been uh, working on last week's challenge to fix some of the things that I haven't finished fully. Uh, and uh, here's today on the fifth week challenge, but I think it's good and I'm 
ready for this week's challenge and looking forward to, to work in a group as well. So just a question, you did, yeah, why, did, why didn't you rest? Is it because you wanted to finish or you just, your work is your rest? Uh, no, uh, no, my work isn't my rest, but there were actually lots of things that I haven't finished that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I still haven't finished all of them, but I, I, I was supposed to finish at least some of the tasks that I have to finish. And uh, it was just, a, my code base was just a mess before, uh, Saturday, before Sunday, so I had to finish some of them for the final submission after submitting, but for the final structure of the code. Yeah, I would just I would just encourage you to also consider work as rest because to let your mind to put the phone away to put the computer away and go run around the block or play football or do whatever you enjoy doing mm. is also a way to refresh the mind. Um, so I would just encourage you to make sure that you find enough time to rest because as as the great prophet Drake said, uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's it's a bit hard when there is lots of things on your mind and to let go of that and just race around doing something that you enjoy. Yeah. I, I don't know, it's a bit difficult for me. So it's a fair point, but what are you going to do when you have a job and there will always be more work to do than you can finish? Mm, fair point. I think you're right. I should maybe take a break. I mean, that's the problem once you get into work, if they're, you're being paid to deliver some value, but if, you're, if you become the person who will always just work uh, seven days a week, that's great, your manager will love you, but uh, can, how long can you keep that up for? A, and B, when do you, this diminishing return of effort versus creativity, you also have to evaluate that. So I, you, you, everyone needs to manage themselves, but I can guarantee you that when you get into work, there will be more work than anyone, any one person can manage because all, there will always be unfinished tasks. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So just, just keep that in mind. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Well, let's go to Nardos. Nardos, are you able to speak? Otherwise, we'll go to Amal. Amal, can you speak? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's one approach. Uh, okay, Rafa has written. Um, do we have any more ladies on the call? Daisy already went. Uh, Remet? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Remet. So my uh, week challenge was uh, challenging for me, especially at the end. I'm reading in, in other stuff first, but I just submit what I can. I'm still trying to finish some of the tasks, but I did uh, rest yesterday. And okay. I was hoping to do it this week, but I, I, I heard you say before, there will be a time to fix our projects at the end. So I didn't know that. Uh, I will just try to do that uh, at that time. I will focus on this week, from, uh, from this week. I think it's really important not to try and mix two different things because that accumulation, no one will ever finish um, everything that they wanted to get done. But what you don't want to do is, if we continue like this, by the end, you'll be on, in week 12, people will be fixing weeks one to 11 while trying to finish week 12. So put it away, it's done, and now let's pick up week four. And not all of the projects will be equally relevant to the jobs that you're interested in. So our goal is at the end, once you've identified a track, that you do those three or four challenges super well, which are most relevant to the track that you're interested in doing. Um, because you can never learn everything, but let's optimize uh, the effort that we put in um, towards getting that job that you want. And what I would like is that each of you has three or four projects which you're proud to walk through on a call with an employer. And so that level oh, of the, the presentation and the code should be at that level, but you'll have time afterwards. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. We'll go to Titus. 
Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Curtis. Yeah, if you could speak a little bit louder, that would be great. Oh, okay. So I'm uh, what about right now? Is it much better? It's okay. It's okay. You probably need to get a new microphone at some point. Now we can't hear you at all. Titus, are you there? We can't hear you at all. Okay, so we'll go to Abu Bakr and we'll wait for Titus to come afterwards. Yeah, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Abu Bakr. Yeah, um, last week was great. Um, I learned a lot and um, fortunately, I was not able to complete all my tasks in week three, which um, this week, because of course, the weekend I do rest. So this week, I will try to complete some of them, especially the final project. And then um, I just have a quick question. Last week, uh, we had an introduction to um, work with, with Cosimo. So I don't know if this week we're going to have read the um, tax. No, so we have one weekly, we have one task per week. So we plan two Web3 tasks um, as part of the entire training. So this week and next week is focused on speech to text, so natural language processing. Week six, I believe, is planned as our first Web3 project. Okay, thank you. I think next week we'll have a guest uh, talk. Or we'll finish off the guest talk from Cosimo. And then week uh, six, I believe, is the first Web3 project. Um, Abu Bakr, you mentioned that you want to finish your project this week. As mentioned to the others, I would encourage that you don't do that. Let's finish one thing before we start the next thing. It'll be difficult to pick up, uh, to do too many things in parallel. So my okay. advice would be rather uh, finish that, uh, finish one or let it go. Let's focus on this week and you can always pick it up at the end. Okay, sir. Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, Salam. So, um, and quick update, please, from your side on how has how's it been so far, weeks one to three, and anything you're looking forward to for this week, and if you'd like to share how you rested on the weekend. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well, good morning. Uh, well, uh, uh, okay, on last week, uh, I would say I had uh, better, I did better uh, when compared to week two. Uh, I managed to understand uh, lots of the technical things and uh, I managed uh, to do the task. So I would say comparatively, it was good. Okay. Great. Thanks. Anything else you want to share? If not, we'll go on to Titus. Okay. Uh, are you able to hear me right now? Yeah, now it's much better. I don't know what you've done. It sounds, oh, uh, oh. it's five times better. Oh, oh okay. So, um, no, thank you for the opportunity. Um, personally, uh, over the three weeks, um, my learning curve has been great. I'm really proud of myself, especially last week, because um, there was significant uh, improvement in my submissions as compared to the first and second week. So yeah, I'm really getting a hang out of it. And uh, yeah, it's been an interesting and awesome learning experience. Uh, so on the, on the weekend, on Sunday, um, I spent some, a lot of, a lot, most of my time with my friends. Um, during the morning, I had, I had to do some, some little, uh, so there was some stuff that I didn't, have, I didn't finish about the, the coding. So like I did it for like, um, for some three hours, I think at 10. 10 a.m. UTC, I went to visit uh, some friends so until the evening. So it was an active rest. So, and I'm really, really, really interested in this week's pro project and looking forward to cooperating with my team. So, yeah. So I think it's a good sign, Titus, when you start scheduling meetings with your friends in UTC, then I think you've really, you've really taken on the training full time. If you tell your friends that I'll meet you at 10 a.m. UTC, I'm sure they don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, that's good to hear. Um, okay, Matilda. Good, good morning. morning. Can you yeah, hear me? Yeah, very well. Good morning. Okay, so I I had a good week last week, um, but maybe not the best. I wasn't able to finish my tasks, um, especially on, 
on Saturday that was into power the evening when I was supposed to deliver the task. So I had to deliver it on deliver them on Sunday. Sunday, um, I think I delivered the last assignment by around um midday, maybe. Yeah, so that was that was the downside I had last week. Um, but I'm hoping that as we progress, I will get to understand things better. And probably by the end of the 12 weeks, I'll go back and do it um, to my satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had a nice weekend. Um, this is from midday, Sunday midday. It was nice. I enjoyed my time. And yeah, I'm looking forward to um, this week's um, challenge. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Teresa. And then I, I don't know if we have any women left who are on the call. So we'll do Teresa and Malaku, and then we'll see if there's any other women on the call. Tadesa? Tadesa, can you go? Otherwise, we'll go to Malaku. Okay, okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hi, good morning. Me? Good morning. Yeah, very well. Okay. Good morning. Is everything nice? Arun and the rest of our Every friends. Okay. Everything is good. Uh, Okay, uh, my last week progress is uh, good, but uh, when it compared to the rest of uh, the week uh, on delivery, uh, I haven't finalized everything as uh, some of the members are said, but uh, I am very grateful for the EDDIA. Uh, he helped me spending his one hour, two hour just he uh, he gave me some tutors on doing things and uh, i'm very grateful uh, about him and uh, i have submitted some of it but uh, i miss some parts just due to a time uh, i have worked on it but uh, my hope is as arun said uh, we will go back and uh, we will see our drawbacks later on uh, but uh, what effect it has now on the, our progress to just to proceed to week five and so on things, I don't know that one, but it is uh, important following uh, your recommendation. But for the rest, uh, on the Saturday, as usual, uh, I, I entertain waters, yeah? <laughs> having a shower, cleaning my home, as usual. And uh, sometimes uh, I used to eat uh, burger, yeah? If you invite me, I'm happy. <laughs> so that's all uh, I do on the weekend. Uh, even though I haven't submitted everything, uh, I prefer yesterday to rest, uh, to have a good rest and uh, even to work parallelly in this week, what I haven't done on the Git only. For the rest, for the delivery already, that is the time is out of the delivery. So this is what I have, uh, but uh, it seems uh, I have to work more than this because I have some ideas that I haven't uh, fully understand it. Even theoretically, I have understand that thing, but practically I haven't catched it up in a good manner. I will do on that. So thank you. Yeah, this, so this is my side. Thank you for that. Um, we'll do. We'll go to Malaku. Uh, hello. Good morning everyone good good morning good morning uh i'm happy that you're fully back so uh to give you an update on uh last week it was quite an interesting one and uh, i believe i have improved a lot uh i managed to deploy my first dashboard so i haven't been able to uh, deploy my dashboard the previous two weeks so last week was great even though it's a dummy uh, that word uh, still managed to deploy it, so it was quite an improvement. So, uh, when coming to my weekends, it was great. I spent time with my family and watched soccer, so it was great. I'm happy that uh, to see Liverpool lose a game, so thank you. That was it. Thank you. We won't get into uh, Champions, Champions League politics here right now. We'll leave it for community community. 
I'm mm -hmm. sure there's, there's somebody here who still likes Manchester United, so I'm sure there's there'll be some comments about that. Uh, Ab Abel? Abel? Abel, I, I can't hear you. I don't know if anyone else can hear him. No, can't hear you. Hello? Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, there was a bit of problem with my earphone. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, last week was a better week compared to uh, the previous other weeks. Uh, uh, and I didn't rest well on Saturday and Sunday. With, with a bit of looking what I haven't finished last week and, and uh, uh, we're having a test in need to be prepared for on the uh, sometime on the next month uh, and on the this week uh, I'm happy to be able to work with a group again and to de deliver the tasks needed so that's in my that's what I have okay Great. So I'm going to just summarize uh, some of the announcements and then I just want to reflect on a few of the things that we heard. So in terms of announcements, uh, week four is a two week long project. It's going to be done in groups. I think everyone, the materials have already been shared with everyone. There'll be two careers challenges this week. They haven't been shared yet, but they will be. They'll, there will be one being a T-shaped learner. Um, and a really interesting article, which I would love to discuss with anyone who's interested, where somebody says, forget T-shape, you should actually be a semicolon. But um, the guy's a bit out there, but it's a nice thought. The second is uh, prioritization um, and a time management exercise. That'll be an intensive one hour. Um, we have the leaderboard that's been released. Uh, this week, we will start the at the end of the week, the contract process and start asking for the first deposits. Um, and after week four, we're going to start the careers process as well. So that means there's a couple of things that will have to happen. Um, getting everyone's profile ready, working on CVs, um, recording a video and making sure that we start to align ourselves to what sort of jobs do we actually need to get. And this is why straight away we started with the three real, three real world jobs exercise. We will be successful if each of you gets, we will be successful if each of you gets a job. And so I don't say we as 10 Academy, but all of us here on this call, the goal is that each of you ends up getting a job. And this is where you have to, the certificate at the end of the training it's not going to help by itself. If you finish with a piece of paper, that's not our goal. Our goal is that you actually go out and do useful work in industry. And so we are going to be starting that process from week five onwards. Um, and so that will be, yeah, it'll be an interesting step ahead and it will require a different type of thinking. So two reflections. One is <clears throat> there's a level of comfort and professionalism, which I'm hearing uh, by and large across the group. And it feels to me like people are settling into the rhythm. Now, maybe some of the people who didn't speak are tired or they're feeling uncomfortable. I don't know, it's difficult for me to say, but by and large, if I compare the standups, this standup today to one of the standups in week zero, in week zero, there was a feeling of uh, tiredness or stress or not being able to know what's coming and not knowing how to manage it. But I'm happy to hear that people seem to be um, mastering the level of work that's being asked. So I, that's uh, that's good to hear. The general level of energy and optimism is high. Um, so if this was a team at work, I would right now feel like actually we are on track. Um, we want people to be working hard and we don't want people to be burning themselves out. Because in the long term, working to the point where you're not effective anymore isn't isn't good for the organization or for the manager. We want to be getting working at the peak of performance without falling over the other edge where you just stop working. Now, I'm sure for that's a general statement. There's some people who are maybe a little bit further. They've gone over the edge and they've gotten tired. I hope that they've rested and come back. And there's probably some people who could be um, ramping up their work effort a little bit. So, but by and large as a group, I think we're doing well. I wanted to I wanted to share that I don't think uh, for anyone who didn't finish all of the tasks, I think one has to think
think carefully about is it realistic to get all of this done in a good way for your first time in one week. And so when you are, and I'm saying this because when you get out to the world of work, your managers will ask you to do something. And they will probably ask you to give, you an, give them an estimate of how much time or effort it will take. And I would like that you don't fall into the trap of saying, I'm always going to get everything done and I'm gonna rush through and work to make every single thing happen all of the time. Because it's not always the best approach to take in the long run. You should deliver as much as you can, but it's equally your job to evaluate what is realistic um, at a good level of quality in a good amount of time. And as a manager, I would much rather hear from my team that, look, you've asked me to do these five things. I can get three of these things done well. I can get three things done well this week, given the amount of time and energy I have, plus other tasks. Which three things do you want me to work on? Instead of saying, you know what? I'm gonna do everything. And I'm always gonna do everything. And I'm always gonna find a way to satisfy every one of your considerations. Because you have to realize as you get into um, further on in your career, your manager also doesn't have all of the answers. Your manager is also experimenting. As the systems get more complicated, we are moving out of there always being a perfect solution to we are discovering this together. And so it's important for you to take an hour to look at the tasks that task that is given and to say, this is what I think I can get done. And then you, once you commit to that, you have to either deliver on it for sure, or you communicate why, and you should communicate early, why you didn't get done what you uh, said you would get done. So if you look at the weekly challenges that are there, we have made them up in a way that it's pretty difficult to get everything done. So for those of you who are feeling bad or who are complaining to uh, your loved ones that I didn't finish everything, I would ask you or I would encourage you to think carefully about, is it, was it realistic uh, to get everything done to a good level of quality in one week? Or is it rather better to say, you know what, this is what I've learned. This is what I didn't finish. Write it down, make a note, and come back to it when you have a free moment. Because this type of situation where you're being asked to do more than is realistically possible, and sometimes the more is not just effort, but it's discovery, it's learning, it's the testing, it's the documentation. To do all of that in a good way is sometimes more work um, than is realistically possible. And of course, if there's some crazy deadline, the company needs this right away, then okay. I mean, I've always taken the approach, look, if you want me to stay up all night and get something done, okay, I can do that once or twice, but I'm still a human being. So if I work the whole night, I'm just not gonna be productive the next day. So then the next day I would go and sleep. And so you need to have that discussion with your manager. Each of you are human beings. So don't try and don't pretend to be uh, an AWS instance because you're not. So we're over time, but I wanted to just see if anyone had any uh, reflections on both energy level and also around um, prioritization and the ability to say, this is how much I can realistically get done in the uh, amount of time that we have available. And while uh, maybe we can take two reflections, but while people are putting up their hands, I, one of our batch four graduates, this is where him and I would always go back and forth and talk about manager API. So an employee does whatever he or she is told, but a manager starts to think about how do I optimize things? And also what do I say no to? So as you mature, you will also start to be able to differentiate between what can I do and what can I say no to? And often saying no is as useful to a company or to your team as just doing as much work as possible. So Binya? Okay, can you hear me, Yara? Yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, saying that. Um, it actually makes me be feel better because um, that's actually my approach uh, to the whole thing because uh, when I started, I actually didn't know much about uh, machine learning or deep learning or um, uh, any of the tools we've been using. But uh, I've been preparing a checklist every week, uh, just a limited checklist um, uh, that I wanted to uh, eliminate out of my checklist by the end of the week. Uh, so, so far I've been successful. Uh, I've, uh, I have uh, managed to incorporate more and more tools uh, uh, the, as the week progressed. 
That means in the start I didn't know Docker, but uh, on week two I've managed to use Docker, uh, but uh, I failed to effectively utilize Streamlit, but uh, on week three I've managed to utilize both of them. So uh, as the weeks progressed, I've managed to incorporate more and more tools into my work. I believe the last week was um, the best of the three, in my opinion, because uh, uh, Almost all the tools uh, listed in the uh, document. Of course, uh, there are some exceptions, but uh, uh, generally, that's my approach, and uh, I, I intend to improve upon my current state uh, uh, as the weeks progress. So, thank you for saying that. Uh, that uh, actually reassures uh, me. Uh, thank you. Okay, great. Any? Uh, so, we'll take one reflection from any of the women who want to make a reflection. Otherwise, we'll wrap up. So I'd love to hear from, uh, who do we have on the call? We have Matilda, Rafa, Stella, Daisy, um, Remet, uh, Nardos, Margaret, Salam, Amal. So Kevin, we're just gonna wait for one of the ladies to put their hand up. So I, I'd love to hear a reflection from one of the ladies. So Amal, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, for me, um, last week has been great. I can see a lot of improvement from my side. Uh, I have been able to know how to use GitHub effectively, especially using the issues and projects. Uh, I've also been able to use um, random forest regressors for prediction and everything for modeling. So I can see improvement. I, I think I'm, I'm in line. I don't see it. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Ke so we'll wrap up with Kevin. Kevin, go ahead. We'll give you the last word. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Alamin. Good morning, everyone. And uh, good. Good I want to take this opportunity and thank you all for congratulations. Uh, so for the week reflection, it's been so amazing so far, starting from week one up to week three. So I joined I joined the academy like I was new to machine learning, but so far it's a I have a good progress in terms of like building some machine learning and as well as deep learning and uh, yeah uh, i'm still having a gap in uh, in in deployment in dashboard but i'm sure that i will try to to wrap up as we proceed with other weeks yeah excellent okay so thanks for that and wishing everyone a wonderful start to the week see you guys uh on slack and beyond. Thanks, everyone. Let's stop the recording and then we can move on. Thanks, everyone.
one. Hello, everyone. Sorry, just um, I was waiting, but I didn't realize I was accepted. I had to accept joining um, because of the video record. But great, let's start and we'll wait. I mean, other people would, would join in. So um, I was not in the stand up today, so I didn't know what was like the quick summary, how people felt last week and you know what th this week is going to be um, a new shift again just in terms of like we'll be much more focusing on deep learning and we will be a lot more it will be a, a kind of two weeks uh, so next week half basically on Thursday we finish so that you will get a rest so this is just the middle of the um, the training like let's say just where we shift gears and in the week five, that means two weeks after, there will be all a project on blockchains. And so it's, it it's gets like much more data engineering, a lot more will dominate. Uh, so this one is a lot more just, yeah, we, we're kind of the dominant machine learning engineering and setting up the system. And all the things that you have used so far will be relevant. And what uh, will be a little bit change in terms of the coming weeks as that unlike before you will be also forced to learn a little bit of javascript react in building some kind of front ends and in this week for that exactly reason uh, you would build instead of just a dashboard like it's going to be a little bit update you will build backend system that provides your model via an api so you can use flask you can use some other uh, you know fast api or some any other things so you know there will be a tutorial on that but that's the kind of the start between now preparing what is you know back end front end um and then the data engineering and the machine learning engineering you know with how do you serve like in your front end basically what we call dashboard is mostly in in a sense it's a front end and in the moment like in uh, Streamlit, what you have built has been a lot more, uh, you didn't separate it cleanly because you were just basically were asked to connect your model, for example, and you were, you did so connect, but it was all probably in one code uh, that you had it in the server. And when the server is pinged, uh, you know, from a browser, it basically does everything there. But in this, front end, back end uh, separation, you would really develop it separately. So that means you would cleanly have a back end that responds for a certain message through some kind of API. And then, uh, or it can be just, yeah, it's kind of any type of API that you would form. And then the front end basically just, you would develop it irrespective of, you know, whether you can, you may use, um, you may use Streamlit if you want to, or but you don't have to, or Flask, or it can be React. It doesn't matter what you, you would use. So that's the, you know, the concept of API is that it doesn't matter what you use. It's just gonna be like an HTTP call that you will have to your backend. And therefore, it, you know, it separates the technology that you will build, you will use. So you can use in the backend Python mostly because you are much more familiar now with Python, but you could use other backend uh, programs like Node.js or anything. And then in the front end, you can use also anything else. And, you know, usually that's what we are going, especially when we are trying to deploy in, in Web3. So, so this will be the first one attempting to that direction, but also really working on um, looking at how are these models, for example, in real life going to be integrating. And one of the things as a bonus this time that you would have a, a task is integrating once you develop a model, trying to integrate that model, it's a, it's, it's a deep learning model, trying to integrate it into an Alexa or convert it or deployment now instead of as just a back, you know, as a just dashboard only where it's not going to benefit a lot, but you will try to integrate it into Alexa skills. So that means it will form as part of like converting it, the process you go through um, and attach whatever language that you have into an Alexa skill. 
and that may not you know i am not very familiar with that as well so i haven't yet connected but this is exactly what we will be doing together um and we will learn you know what are the challenges because alexa still the wake up call and and many of the things just to start with probably you will not have an amharic or i mean you know, there may be swahili i haven't checked but you know the good thing about alexa is that you can actually give your 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 own wake up call so that means if, if this deployment is going to be a lot more let's say geared towards people who don't speak english um but who want to order something you know who want to just interact with alexa through your uh, model then you will be able to just do like you know the wake up call you can change it and and then also every other conversation after that it will go to your api to be translated and then the action to go to a certain thing you know it could be like a connect speaker you know switch off the lights um, turn on the tv stuff like that you would so but the current data that we provide doesn't have is not suitable for comments but we have attached um some data external data sources where you will be able to actually um get more enriched data for commanding so okay so all of this is just much more you know motivating the the kind of the overall grand picture where you are now what what happened so far and then where you're going to be you know this week or this challenge and then what is coming okay so we now will go into the description but is there any question anything before that that anyone has martin all right i thank you for that i actually think it it will be a very good experience working on uh rests on the restful apis uh, so that you can be able to learn how uh, the machine learning models can even be integrated with other applications like even maybe the web applications phone applications other types of applications i was wondering uh, about uh, asynchronous uh, scheduling um will we be uh, will we be doing any asynchronous like task scheduling like how 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 we can be able to incorporate that together with uh, the machine learning models and we also have a mail flow adapt in between so how do we consider all those things uh, like together uh, um, so there isn't a particular one but the very good asynchronous model one can do even in this project is if you know the bluetooth connection uh, from python so that would be basically being able to um like one could assume let's imagine okay we might not we might connect or we might not connect the alexa but if we were to deploy this one to raspberry pi or some other you know edge device um and you want to be able to read connections from let's say you want to connect Raspberry Pi now to an audio like a speaker that would require a lot more asynchronous type of communications of course also in your programming you can always just in use asynchronous programming we haven't explicitly uh, done that like or at least in the project that we have designed it isn't um, as like a focus on that but I think that's a good point maybe just we might think about it and especially usually these things what we are doing is a lot more as a bonus so people can look at it especially when when it's a group task um one can try to convert them into a single you know not only asynchronous but also some kind of parallel computing um you know kind of using trades using sockets um for doing that kind of thing so in a way that that definitely is a good point um we'll, I'll, I'll see what we can do with that but not not in this one you know it's just optional of course every other program you can do it whenever you 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 are connecting something that takes time um while you are processing you can always just use asynchronous calls in such a way that 
you know you you do a lot more um, effectively if that is the case especially if it is done handled like your operations are handled by a system and um, then instead of just doing it with a synchronous model uh, using asynchronous would help but yeah as i said not explicit in the challenge at the moment so an another one that i would like to you know to see where we are as a group like by now you you must admit that we are like a one big team trying to do sometimes to behave as multiple teams and trying to behave sometimes individuals but it's really one thing right so the mood a way of measuring the the understanding and the mood of the team is important so i want to know i have spoken something let's say just random right some for some it's easy to understand for some it might not be what i have talked about because i talked about amazon alexa skill uh, um, integration i talked about splitting back end front end and i was speaking about as well we were talking about like asynchronous versus synchronous or that so how many how many of you just raise don't worry um was it kind of clear like let's say 50 percent clear or below 50 percent clear and 100 percent clear so let, let's say like who could followed up the conversation or what i said um kind of they could understand roughly what it means so just i just wanted to know so who didn't understand like fully just if you like let's just say who didn't understand what we were talking about like the, the context as well as Okay, Michael, uh, fifty percent clear. Just others can if you just type because it will tell me. You know, if you don't say it, you're basically I assume that you understand everything, right? So I just wanted to know, you know, who's confused, who's fifty percent clear or more. Stay up, forty percent clear. Forty sixteen or sixty maybe. Okay. Okay, they see. Bit confused. Okay. Does fire fifty percent? Matilda not clear. Bit confused. Margaret. Remed to twenty thirty. Bit confused. A lot connection in the middle. Great. Um. Okay, design for me. It's like the table is in the detail. Yeah, true, but it's the same for everyone. Great. Need some time. Uh, fifty less than fifty percent joined when you started talking about Alexa skills. What skill are those? The command Alexa is able to understand. Yeah, true, Henok. So it's about being able to play with integrating our models. So basically, we will build a, a backend system with the API um, that Alexa can forward. Let's say the whatever she. It, it it is the context um the back end basically the api becomes a context and it when it whenever it detects that context it sends to your api and the api responds to that like it will process so and then that's what's like the kind of the type of skill you can give it skill just that is simple or you can give it like back end driven so yeah it's like we'll, we'll just play with that because it's a big group uh, we can split and play with different things you need more fully to understand brook no, it was not clear. I missed some things at first. I came in a bit later then, so okay. So great. I think th these are these are good. It gives me, you know, a good understanding. I you know, I didn't expect even that much understanding, so I'm I'm very good. But just on the ones that are a bit confused, uh, especially because you lost connection or you just didn't get clear, can um so where which part confuse you just so that i can understand because you may know a lot about about part of the things that i have done or i've said sorry um but you may have confused because the sentences were not connected the context you may have lost um so i want to understand where i is confused if someone just you know um raise hand and explain just what part confused is that the con that the context is not clear or is it just the some of the things that I mentioned is not clear? Which part is, is not clear or which part has confused you? 
So Michael on the point of asynchronous and Amazon, it's new for me. I'm a bit confused. Okay, great. So that one, uh, that one uh, asynchronous is, you know, we were not talking, I think it's Michael, who, uh, it's uh, Martin who asked it about asynchronous type of programming. Um, while we were talking about Amazon, Amazon is just basically, okay, you will have a model and you in the past have served your model. So let's say Streamlit kind of uh, dashboard, right? But now Streamlit dashboard, you know, great if the purpose is like for one company to use it. But things like speech to text, what you will be doing this week is slightly different because in a way, we're sure like, what is it gonna do? Uh, if you are building an app, a mobile app, that's great, right? Because the mobile app will integrate this and maybe maybe you would answer some questions. I don't know, your mobile app could be uh, helping people browse pages in Google, right? So it's basically, you can allow people to search in their language instead of typing, you know, with it. So that's great, but that requires, now you build a mobile app or, you know, but nobody would, you in your realistic scenario, nobody would just go to your, website and interact with your website to reach a Google document, right? Or something. So that basically the deployment method of things like deep learning models, whatever is much more on embedded systems, like on a mobile phone or on, you know, some kind of the home devices. So the one of the, the tool to do that is Amazon and Amazon Alexa is just, you know, really a most convenient way. You buy it once and it has many things, and it's very smart as well, right? So it's about being able to deploy in that kind of system, being able to uh, build your backend in such a way that you connect it with Amazon Alexa such that anyone with Amazon Alexa can actually, you know, like let's say old people um, in, you know, in Swahili speaking or Amharic speaking places could interact and could do that. So it's, it's a new type of deployment, right? It's just deploying where it will be used so hopefully that is the amazon part is split but of course that kind of thing can be done asynchronous programming is a type of programming where it's like you know a lot of the synchronous a lot of your normal coding is sequentially um, run but if you do asynchronous it's basically gonna be a lot more you're gonna call a system and you give it to the system and then you go on and, and you proceed when that is completed, so it's this different type of programming uh, normally required, especially if you are doing some kind of web-based web um, calls, right? Because you don't know if you request something, you don't know how long it will take to come. So instead of waiting there, you'll basically just, you know, you you do, you send a thing and then you, do, you start doing something else. And then when the answer comes, you know, then you continue from that. So this is the type of, programming. So it's really nothing um, like that, but it's just type of programming. And um, Martin was asking if we were doing that and I was explaining that. Hopefully, Michael. Yeah, great. It's clear. Yeah, the topic is basically, I assumed you got shared. Okay, if the document was not shared, then again, context was lost. So I'm going to go directly to that now. So Biniam, it will be probably clear. So today, this week's challenge is on um, speech to text uh, using deep learning right and so you'll be doing all the pre-processing and the data pre whatever and modeling with um, you know just deep learning models to be able to understand language in Swahili and Amharic to to really then uh, take the context or basically turn them into um, into a text, right? And that text, the good thing about that text is that if you assume now this is a command, just a simple as command, let's say, you know, um, left, right, on, off, you know, like that, then you basically, given now that you have the text, you can use that text to, in your code, basically, to, to do anything. So for example, uh, a switch off, you know, the TV, Basically now this is a command, you understand it, and therefore you basically just say like, okay, so you search, you know, you you take that command and, and do some action. So today's, you know, this week's ch um, challenge is about yeah, doing speech to text translation and, and then the deployment is what we are talking about. Um, so hopefully, 
No, I'm not. So I'm just going to directly share now. Okay, so that is the one. So, but it's still like um, great. So, th are things now slightly clearer for some people? So, uh, again, you know, before I'm 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 gonna share, but I just wanna say, like, was the context? Um, anyone now got the context? Or so I mean, we'll come back to it maybe. Just that the good thing is that let's keep this one. People who got confused about what we talked people who had uh, slightly below 50 percent understanding just don't forget what you haven't understood so far and then if it's things are getting clear i will ask again so just keep um, you know keep, pay attention um and then we come back to exactly that the what have we done so far what are we expected to do now and then what will be the future weeks looks like okay so okay this week's challenge is in african language speech recognition so it's a speech to text and basically assume like just for the context that you needed you know this you are employed you know you are by a company that is interested to do uh this for a number of reasons but one of the reason is just you know this is just a motivation there are many of them you could actually try them also the apis some of them are free like at least for test but in this case, the context is that, okay, let's imagine that the World Food Program wants to deploy an intelligent formula that collects nutritional information of food, bought and sold at markets in two different countries in Africa, Ethiopia and Kenya. The design of this intelligent form requires selected people to install an app on their mobile phone. And whenever they buy food, they use their voice to activate the app to register the list of items they just bought in their own language, right? The intelligence systems in the app are expected to live um, to live to, uh, to live transcript the speech and organize the information in an easy uh, to process way in a database okay and you work for a tenacious data science consultancy which is chosen to deliver speech to text technology for two languages your responsibility is to build a deep learning model that's capable of transcribing a speech um, to text and the model you produce should be accurate and is robust against background background noises. Okay, that's clear. And in a way, that really what it means is that in this case, it is of course the element is um, think of it as this is a mobile app that was developed, so you could deploy it as part of a mobile app. But almost always, you have to know this this time, and you can't just put it. Of course, it would be nice to not have a network connection to the, just to put in the app itself the model and then there's no connection uh, with the back end but for versatile purposes what you do usually is that you separate the back end and the front end in this case the front end is the mobile app right the mobile app um, records it uses the system's uh, peripherals you know the mic the whatever the, the speakers whatever in the location to collect data but then always it would it would just then go send it to a backend for example using a post method or to save it it could be then also it could request okay now it, it could also receive it could query the backend to say okay you know give me the transcription of this and then it would get the transcription of that it shows maybe like let's say the user and the user may confirm and then once they confirm it also then send this back again okay the user has confirmed the transcription is correct save it again in this one right so all of this happens usually with the communication of the front end and the back end of course in the in between there are multiple middle middlewares that you can put but that's what you know that middleware for example in the future we'll have one project where we have a kafka system that's a streaming system that would really because now you assume thousands of people could be doing it you know and then organizing the timing and the holding you know while the service is just still being um able to run your for example the your back end which is transcribing it may be slow so in that case you know all of those items will not be lost in the communication it will be stored let's say in a half hour message passing um systems things like that but for now 
the whole point is that we try to just go one step only. One is your model, and the second is you try to separate, build something backend. Your model lives in a backend, which is kind of basically a, an API type of system. That means it will be just queried and it would answer based on the API endpoints. Okay. So, so in the data, just we have provided only just one of the the best ones we get, but we know there are out there good ones, especially. Um, so for Amharic, this is the one that was a 20 hour training data and a two hour test. Okay. And for Suhaili, I think there definitely is a better one. I just didn't find. Uh, so I really recommend people to search and, and tell us if there are better data because, the you know, we require about 3000 hours for actually a good, um, a good training. Of course, 3,000 hour means also just when the data increases, you know, the computational things increase, but at least let's worry about the computation. The, the data needs to be diverse and clean and good for, for this kind of things. So, but anyways, so just as a start, we have this data that is in, in you know, that you would you would find uh, in this link. But we have also, I mean, this, this year, I have identified one other place called Zenodo. In that Zenodo, there is so many other data sets people are uploading, right? So, and one of the things that I found very easy and very good is just that this Amharic voice commands. So it's a 315 megabyte data, which is really a good one for only commands because the other one, even if it's, you know, gigabyte, what is really about is that it's just so many in the wild things, right? So there aren't clear things, but here is basically commands. Like that means, you know, um, on, off, blah, blah, things. And so we will integrate that also. That's why it's like the, you know, we will use these commands, for example, in the Amharic sense, I'm sure that it would be similar type of data set for Swahili. So we will do that. We will collect, enrich the data as well, because the data is the, the, the most important part in training sometimes more than um, uh, more than anything. And then after that is the pre-processing and, and the modeling. So you will be asked one task in your team will be really enriching the data, finding data and trying to, you know, just be clever to get data and improve it. It could be even generating your own data, right? So it's like you may you may ask friends and whatever to read. So this would be just only one, one, one part of the team that would be on enriching data, on collecting and getting data, organizing data, so the data extraction and organization. And then there is another part uh, who would be working in, within your team about pre-processing as, as well. And then the other part on modeling and the other one on deployment. I think they all should be thinking and ex of course exploring from day one. It shouldn't just be like, okay, everybody works on this one, but everybody, all of the people then of course has to understand, look at the data. For example, when PR is requested from a part of the team who is doing on pre-processing, the other part must check the, the, the code and uh, request, you know, accept the PR. So, we will definitely, you know, you need definitely to work hard in this one um, to really make it make it just involving. Because last time what we observed in week two is that some people were only once uh, committed, unacceptable. I mean, that, that's unacceptable. Even if we have identified a lot, you know, some people really work the majority of it. I think this time it doesn't matter what you do. You must commit a lot. You must really, really help like the, the team. And this is essential, basically. Just this is the, you know, the week four and it's really essential. We will be very, very uh, strict about it. We want to, we will re request one of the thing, one of the um, uh, submission this time will be exactly who did what, right? Like, and, and definitely we need, you know, equal contribution. Equal contribution doesn't mean everybody quotes the same thing, but it's about like, relevant parts, relevant pieces, you know, they, like someone really worked on, on data integration part a lot and they submitted and they committed, they documented the data. Data documentation is another thing. They made it easy for people to find out the data. They clean the data and put it. Maybe they worked on, on the infrastructure, like things like that, but everybody needs to participate. Okay. So that's the part. And the data features, of course, like you will read it when you get the data. It's basically there's inputs. There are audio clips of spoken words, 
and the target labels are a text transcript of what what was spoken in that one right so of course because this is different type of data it's not a table it's just audios you need to really you know you can't just open them and see columns right it's just these are basically wav files or mp3 files right so th these are different type of files so working you will be working on different type of data and you would be working on visualizing and understanding you know working with audio data um, as well as also because you will be just fully building um uh, deep learning model so you would be much more like you know in the modeling sense that you would be working on on that like you know keras tensorflow pytorch whichever and of course this is really a big more uh, big kind of uh, thing we will provide you with um cloud service so that means you will every group will have one big you know one um large cluster uh, at least 60 gigabyte ram um, and something like maybe eight or 60 uh, 60 cores, and then one deep, like one um, NVIDIA graphic card, so GPU, so that you all just manage that to, to build on that. So it will be the data, whatever will be, um, will not be in your computer. Uh, so you don't worry about, you know, connection speed, whatever, like downloading data, or you can, you can work in, in, the, in the cloud. Until Wednesday, though, you will be working only on structuring your thing and stuff. So we will only act, start providing um, that machine uh, on on Wednesday. Until then, you can use, of course, the Google Colab um, to start working and organizing and, and and planning. Okay, and of course, just always just you know use the um, the things that you have used already so far in keeping you know the framework. Okay. I think these are all the same. Um, there will be a lot, like, so the submissions are similar, but this time the survey of, like, somebody has to, part of the group also need to survey the speech-to-text deep learning architectures, in particular focusing on, you know, low resource languages. So they must present and, and you know, like, so there should be like that. And the discussion formats um, of data formatting and pre-processing, for example, this, you know, this is a different audio data. So how do you convert an audio data into features, right? So ultimately you need features. What are the features? Is that just like the timestamps or do you convert? So that's cool. In this case, we will ask you to do some kind of uh, Fourier transform and then you would use the uh, Fourier uh, modes. So these are called the MLE spectrum and the character representation ETC as you know that you need to discuss that's in the data processing and data visualization and then of course you'd start really thinking about in your model you know what makes it better right because you're you are working towards getting a better uh, model that provides that understands like you know that has a high accuracy, high accuracy um so yeah it's kind of again because this data you will see in in, in at least i understand amharic in the amharic language for example, there are a number of things that are just so, the 20 hours is so not representative. And it has some things, you know, that are not, that are not expected that in a new daily life, like uh, that you would get. So it maybe is a bit formal or a bit, you know, so this, this is especially when, when it's like 3000 hours, it gets really hard to test, to check everything. Even for this 20 hour, you will not be able to check everything. So it's really an interesting concept to know, you know, do you actually know your data? How biased it is, you know, um, in terms of its language usage, in terms of its representation of different cultures um, and stuff. So one part of your group also needs to look into this the ethics, bias and fairness perspective of the data, you know, so it, it needs to report on that. <clears throat> and then, of course, you know, that's that's all just, let's say, between the interim submissions. So that's, there are two interim submissions this this time. So one is on Wednesday and the other one is on Saturday. And the final submission is on next week, Thursday. So the two the two interim submissions should discuss, you know, a number of these challenges um, <clears throat> on both the technical element, the survey element of, you know, what has been done you know, what are the models that were inspired, that were good, that worked for these, these two languages, um, and what are the data that are available that, 
one can use. And then also on the ethics bias, you know, what is, you know, have, have you checked, uh, checking on the biasness and the fair representation of the data um, that you are working on? You know, it's like, how is it collected? Do you know? So there are a uh, couple of things that are called, <clears throat> I will, I'll, again, I'll, I will, I'll give some references for that, but there are called data curves um, and model curves that were introduced. <clears throat> and so you try to probably build those things, okay? So, yeah. And then in the final report, of course, you do exactly just like before, you try to really detail your experience, <clears throat> your learning, and basically, you know, just you you will give us like a certain detail, but yeah, it's basically similar. You basically just summarize every of your finding in all aspects, like in the ethics aspect, in the you know, pre-processing aspect, in the modeling aspect, uh, in the data enrichment aspect. If you really do a good summary and a good review, this can really be your, you know, you can present it even, you can hope to present it in big conferences, um, at least, you know, like that's possible. Um, <clears throat> and then the rest is also, of course, this is important because you're gonna get different data, different things, you'll be working and fusing data. Um, and so that's the part. And the dockerization, whatever, I think is, you know, most important here is that how are you gonna deploy it, especially when you are thinking of backend, you know, this is important because systems fail and they need to be easy to deploy, right? So, and again, the ML modeling part, that's basically just uh, it. Like, and I think you know everything here. <clears throat> and the limitations of your work, whatever, you have to uh, explore it as well. Like, you know, you have to test your model. Does it really understand basic things? Where is it good? Where is it not good? Um, so you need to understand that element. So this week you will be working in a group. So there will be only five groups. So that means one group is really bigger this time. It's about almost nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Some might have 10, but it's about nine or 10. Um, and there are five groups. So each group will receive one computing cluster um, and basically one which, which has also a GPU connected to it. And that means you have to provide. <clears throat> so what you would to get access to that is that you have to provide, you have to generate um, SSH key and you have to send it to um, Abdullahi. And so he will reach out to you as well. But it's like basically you have to gen be able to generate um, a SSH key and you give it the public key to him. Um, sometimes it's, you know, our experience that is really hard. Sometimes some people is new. So he would provide also a reference for that. But almost always um, it's just easier, you know, to follow that guide and generate that. And Windows users, you know, be careful. There are sometimes it's much harder. And so in that case, it would be easier if you have just, I don't know, Linux somewhere to generate from that um, because the Windows, I think, you know, there are a lot, a lot of people with experience in Windows so they can help you. But like setting up like SSH a key um, to log into something using SSH, I think it's putty that you will use in Windows if you are using Windows. Uh, but if you are using Linux, I think it's just super simple. It's like, um, so we'll provide also some kind of guideline, hopefully, just some people already in the past had solved these things. So we'll ask, you know, if people are starting tomorrow, we might have a special session on how to generate, you know, how to basically log in SSH from Windows and, and Linux and Mac. I think Mac and Linux are the same, that's why it's just uh, identical more or less, okay? So at the moment, what I have, uh, you know, I it says that you you work, the whole, the same group works in, in both of the languages. I think this is much more of, from the sake of, a lot of people might, you know, not every team has like if I if I assign for example just um, Swahili to some of the teams, it seems like there might not be um, easy like good representation in the Swahili sense for example to for people to understand because I'm not sure how many people are 
understand and speak to to help on that one so what i have in a state is that imagine just both american swahili of course they have their own you know like especially text processing element amharic is very different because you're using amharic text processor while swahili is easier at least because you're using um latin characters right so that's kind of that's why you are expected to do on both but you can specialize if if the group decides like let's specialize on one but then only we will do on the other as a just as a kind of like applying the same techniques on the other data and see um that's also possible so you can if you prefer as a team you can focus one and then on on the other language you can actually just basically you know test use it only as like you know how's our you know a model which is optimized for one language have acts on the other language so within the team you can decide okay and also depending on the type of the amount of data and 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 the amount of things that you you know the amount of help there is so i would say i would expect naturally at least one team would specialize in highly um so not everyone should because i think this is exact my bias because i'm not i was very familiar with amharic uh, kind of data i was asking a lot of people on that data and i get that data but for swali if anyone knows please let us know so that we can get a very clean and and good data so that's again you know just one form of bias the person who designs it kind of has already even the bias starting from there right so you can help um in that regard as well if you are a swali speaker okay so all the rest you know and I think this is basically um, your part, like you do the instructions are the same, you know, first definitely really understand, plan. Um, I think I, hopefully this week we'll follow one team or at least one team's plan and we showcase it just every time we, we in our stand-up, we'll, we'll track it, right? And definitely set up this DFCML flow CML. I think this is just, you can nowadays just pretty easily set up it um, so that, you know, this is your default. Um, and basically explore data, visualize, transform, apply data argumentation technique, review pros and cons of different tools, Keras, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and choose one and easier. Like, of course, if you have enough human resources, you can try to build you know, models in different, um, you, know, you, can, you may choose Keras and PyTorch, right? Or PyTorch and TensorFlow, something like that. So you can actually, if you, if you, if you, it's up to you. And um, so again, based on the review that you will do between now and Wednesday, for example, all of the, you know, the, the things, the data understanding, as well as also the review, you may choose one deep learning architecture that's suitable that you want to uh, use. And, and understand the loss function, the evaluation metrics and other necessary variables and within the group, um, you know, kind of you, of course it may change over time, but you can at least have a plan. Okay, we, based on this, based on this paper, we will follow this paper and we will try to reproduce this paper for our data, right? And um, yeah, like that. So of course you may get the architecture already implemented, you know, you may um, plan to fine tune a day, you know, a, a certain architecture. For example, if you choose one big architecture and that is already given somewhere, you can plan to, you know, to train from scratch, or you can also try to see if you can, um, let's say, fine tune. Fine tune means like you would start on a, the weights are already um, trained by another type of data. Um, so you may also do that. So that's some kind of um this is possible again you will understand if you don't understand now you'll understand what it means after the review and understanding and reading um on this on deep learning so you know again i think one element that one part of the group should really look the data from you know again was the data fair is it representative blah blah right from from fairness and uh, bias perspective but also you should then um extend that to your model as well so now okay you have understood a certain part of it from from your model but now is it also you know is the model now that you produce is it fair that means does it understand equally some things like let's say uh, male and female voices you know or uh, some other kind of like accents 
or things like that, you know, young or old, stuff like that. Uh, or people with a certain form of like, uh, you know, a speech, you know, like uh, very high frequency voices versus low frequency, that's usually male and female voices. And does it have also biases? Like, for example, does it really uh, tend to, whenever you speak to it, tend to understand it in a certain context? You know, is that, is that, is that, you know, so there are, again, when you read in that, on your review, you might, you might find some of those kind of ways to assess to more, you know, and this is really an important on its own. Now that, that part, there are a lot of job opportunities, right? On how you would um, assess the, the performance of uh, a model, especially because these days, you know, as you may know, um, Google, Microsoft, you know, Facebook and uh, OpenAI, they really have this, what they call large um, language models, so LLM, and these are uh, basically have billions and billions that basically, you know, the, the latest one is something like 750 billion parameters. That's basically, you know, it would take three months for Google to train it, you know, with all that resource. And um, GPT-3 is one element in that it will understand, of course, it's not speech to text, but it is again, text to text that you, you would give it a seat. And that will be one part of our training in the future. So there will be, it will come as part of us, you know, using GPT-3 or and utilizing GPT-3 for document scoring or something will be one of the projects maybe in the future. So in a way, you know, this is by itself like, interacting and finding out biases and uh, fairness of a model is really uh, a niche market now as well. So just, you know, the part, you should take that one also seriously and how to evaluate that, um, whether it is biased or fair and all that. Okay, so when you read on that, you know, that you, you will understand a bit more detail. So the rest is basically just these tasks are a bit detailed. So, um, you know, what to do and um, gives you, we give you, I think, a starting model. Um, just, you can, you can look at, at that, at the, some of the references. There are already, you know, some codes that you can use from, from some of these references. Okay. Um, and then in the modeling, again, you know, what, what it means, again, the team should work in such a way that, you know, the pre-processing part, the modeling part, even the, the text, like the report part, somebody has to just PR it. That means pull request. They add it and they work on a branch, they pull request. Even if it's like a readme that you read, you pull request, or even if it's a report that you write, you know, your report can be written also as a markdown, and then you PR it and someone just looks at it and approves it. So work as really one company team, right? So you are basically a company team and you need to just um, basically start using that kind of I think you have already, a lot of you have already been doing that. You have been merging and stuff, that's great. Some of you haven't done or at least forgot to do that. So make sure that you really work in that kind of collaborative way without, you know, without worrying about conflicts, resolve them and stuff like that. That's a real life. So get used to just the real life of like, but at the same time, if you all create organization, it's easier because what last time I saw, even despite we requested that you fork and submit, some people just submitted someone's, um, basically someone's, the link directly to to uh, another person's repo. That's not good. The reason is because when we are now analyzing it, the credit goes to that person, unfortunately. I mean, it, it gets, it, it makes our 10x life hard because we always want to show from your Git the information about it. Now, if you send, if you give us, you know, the link to somebody else, then, what we are presenting, you know, their kind of their whatever is not about you. And that makes it much harder. So I, I would always say that's why I'm always saying fork it. Or if, if it's not fork, just make it a, you know, a, an organization such that when it's at least presented, it's an organization you contributed. But even if, so really make sure that this time that you don't get, you don't get lazy. I think these things just be explicitly stated and it wouldn't have taken a second. You just fork it and then even if it, everything was done on somebody's um, repo, you could have just forked and submit that. And I think some of you just didn't understand that or ignored it. And I think that's not good. That's not a good practice. If I were in a company and you do it repeatedly, I would really be angry at you. 
and just I would say like, why don't you listen to me? Like I'm explicitly explicitly stating, just submit a forked version if you have been working on, you know, collaborated on somebody's individual uh, account. So please don't do that as well. Now, either create just organization or ultimately basically fork it. And and let us know know that that you used your own Git account to commit and stuff. If you use somebody else. That means we can't see anything that was submitted was not from you, so we can't really go through. And I, I think for that just exactly simple purpose, I, I want to show what it means the challenge, um, you know, and because that is really an important. Sometimes you might not know. Um, so, do you see my screen? Yeah, we can see. Yeah, we can see. So now you see like the way that we do is really just, we go here, you know, we look at, so pull requests, okay, it's one closed, definitely it, was, it can't be one closed. So I will just go to the original one, let's say, okay, that was forked, that was great. You know, that's what how we ask it. And then let's say we done the check, okay, pull request. Okay, so there were seven closed. Sure, at least because I knew from where it was forked, I could go to the direct because usually when you, fork sometimes it might not fork the pull request history but i can see what was closed and you know i can see of course ml didn't work here because the test didn't pass you know i can go i can see that you know uh, seven already was was merged right so that's great you know it's kind of i know exactly who merged them who requested them that's fantastic you know like i i would go into that and if i just still want to go to like you know now i for your analysis would be that but then i would go there okay how many people interacted okay so malak how many times he has contributed i would want to know his contribution and i would click there and i would see all of his contributions you know this person has been really contributing a lot working a lot different days it's not one day fantastic okay what about another person um let's say um so Let's say just in this case, T E D D Y. Okay, knows like how many times? Okay, reasonable because at least multiple times they, they committed. But the number of commits you can see is really the contribution for some reason is of course. But then I also see like whenever we grade, what we do is that we also look at what did you do? Did you do actually significant work, right? Because I can go, for example, in the renaming folder, even if like that, I might just go and see how many things that was changed. You know, the change was only one single file. Okay. Um, okay. So then I would look at like plotting scripts. Okay. What does that mean? Is it big or small? Right. I would just go for changed files. Great. So that means, and how many in, in so this basically means this person has actually done 83 added 83 lines. And that means basically this person added this new file. Great. So I can see that this person has been working. So that attribution of the code quality, whatever comes, you know, is that's my, I'm just forming about the contribution as well as also the degree of contribution. Is it just only a simple one line contribution versus, you know, creating new files and with, you know, the, in this case, a really highly structured one, right? So again, here, 50 lines, you know, so it's great. Like that's what we, you see also, so that means this person, even if the number of commits were smaller, I see that they, you know, contributed significantly there. And, you know, in the fixing bugs, like what this person do, how many files? Five changed files. So that means this person in principle was doing a lot, contributing a lot, but probably were not, a, you know, they were just always waiting so long to um, submit, to commit. That's not a good habit, but at least, you know, they get the value. So in, in terms of the frequency of the commits, they might not get a good value, but um, at least in terms of contribution, we know that this person really contributed well, right? So the same thing, we can go to another person in the team and we will basically see like whether, you know, how many contributions. Again here, really multiple days, that means good because at least three per day, we, we think is a good number to look at. A minimum so three is minimum you know it's like if you are just like at all not con you know below that it's basically you are and then also the the, the type of contribution you know is the person working on, on one element you know multiple elements so you can see like on the modeling 
on the part. So this is exactly how we do. It will take us time, make it worth giving you, you know, a good advice uh, on that. And if you don't commit, we really see it. Or if you have committed, but you used somebody else's um, login, again, that is attributed to that person. So this, you know, this is the way of like, not only that we do it here just because we want to market, but in my company, people see my commit histories, people see that, and then they would come and say like, okay, you know, you have in these days, you have done, uh, you haven't committed this much, you know, what is the problem, right? So people just in any way, in any group, they do it that for you. So know that, like, you know, know that this is your fingerprint. That's why we, we keep saying, um, and people, you know, just they trust your work than your, your sometimes what you tell them. So this is really a great way. And that's how we use it as well, just for attributing, so just, just making it clear. Okay, so again, that pull request, that format, that uh, the, the kind of resources that you're using, such that there's no, you know, it's smooth. That means one is not blocked by other because they just pull request and continue branch it. You know, multiple branches we see, like as we, as we saw earlier, you know, this group is really great because they were just forming branches and working on them and maybe putting a pull request and uh, another person applies and kind of, approves by looking at the course, whether it's like it doesn't break, whatever. Of course, the test runs, as we said, you know, we can, of course, look also in the actions, you know. So in this case, okay, they haven't worked on the action because all the actions they, they work it failed. So that means their test wasn't working, right? So, you know, some others probably have done better in terms of like the, so it's kind of, you know, if I am a pull request thing, I would say like, okay, you know, you the test that we agreed on is not working. So can you fix that one? What did, you know, what, what breaks this test, right? I can look at the run and it was about the show metrics part that was failing, right? So, because that's like, you know, everything was correct, but exactly at the uh, part where it was just, you know, put, showing the, the thing, it was, so that basically means resource not accessible by integration, HTTP error, right? Some, somehow, whatever they were requesting wasn't, uh, wasn't, being successful, so that's where like the test was failed. So I can see is that the same test that failed every time. Um, um, so like let's let's look at just the earlier branch, you know, earlier um, ones. So solving conflict. So explore GitHub actions. So again, this one is on the requirement that it failed. Okay, you know something like they haven't debugged clearly because this should have could have passed. Because it's just saying it's like, um, what does it mean equal to? So they had some equal to, while in principle they should they should mean maybe equal equal because that's requirements don't understand. So that the more you know that, the more you become professional. The more you become, this becomes useful. The more you know your tests become really a, a way of like telling you information. That means you know nothing breaks, like, and that's especially in a in a company that's essentially like okay. So I am digressing as well, just so that you understand how we create as well, how we look at things, okay? Um, so, and then serving the predictions on our web interface, this is again, I'm gonna modify it a little bit because this was from the old, as I said, we now have to split it as, at least serve it as um, a backend. So you would, at least you would use Flask or some other fast API or any other API serve, uh, thing to actually provide your model to using API endpoints, okay? So not just, and then the web interface, you can build uh, using anything by by calling that endpoint, the, um, the kind of the API endpoint. So it, you need to separate now, you need to start really thinking and learning and doing into backend, frontend in this case, okay? And of course you would write the reporting and the interpretation. There will be a few tutorials and one is on the introduction and the description of the data um, and the audio processing and deep learning. And there will be also uh, one on audio and data enrichment plus on Amazon, hopefully we will get something uh, also on that, okay? And then API endpoint, uh, just we can arrange uh, maybe a session within by one of the trainee who is comfortable on API probably can give that um, as well on backend and frontend. 
Great, so now let's go back and let's see how are things clear, as well as what we talked earlier, plus in the description, any question, it's know that this is your time to have a perspective, our team. All right, I, I wanted to ask, uh, when are we receiving those lasters? On Wednesday. All right. Okay, guys, I'm